We talk about, of course, COVID-19 and how difficult is it for European leaders to get a handle on it. Are, are states in the U.S. doing any better? We're having a lot of trouble getting vaccine to the people who need it right now in the United States. I think they've delivered about 6 million doses out of 22 million that are available. And it really sheds light on how important it is to get the basic, you know, rollout right and get as many people who need the vaccine vaccinated so we're not holding on to vaccine that could be being used to save lives. What is the right way of distributing vaccines? Does it need to be orchestrated at a federal level? I think there's some aspects of it that could use a lot more federal coordination and then some aspects of it that really need resources at the local level. Part of the campaign needs to be a volume strategy, really being able to find people so that vaccine doesn't go unused. And that can be partly through pharmacies. It can be partly through mass vaccination centers, very clear rules for who should show up and being able to do that efficiently day after day after day. But if that all you do is just wait for people to come in, you're missing the people who really need to be vaccinated who might not come in. And so in parallel to that, there should be a local effort, well-funded, to go out to senior housing, to high-risk workplaces, and vaccinate people on the spot. So I, I would really like to see a strong mobile effort complementing the volume strategy. What's the hardest thing to do in these vaccination campaigns? Is it distribution? Is it, as you say, finding the right people and getting in contact with them? Or is it you know, choosing whether you need a first dose and then a second dose 12 weeks after or before? It is, it's a lot of logistics. It, it's really a lot because it's both the logistics of shipping the vaccine in these big containers to figuring out how they'll get split up to actually setting up the sites to finding the staff for it. I don't think there's one potential rate limiting step. There are probably five or six. And so it requires really a, a strong implementation operation. And, you know, I, I could imagine, though, that this will get better, that as these pieces fall into place, um, that we'll be able to set up vaccine centers, the pharmacies will do more. It'll be kind of a template for mobile operations and teams can form and get vaccine. It's just um, a big challenge to get it set up. Do we risk having new mutant variants because we're vaccinating with numbers going up? Well, that, you know, that is, the, the virus is always mutating. That's what RNA viruses apparently do. They're, they're you know, not that efficient in their uh, reproduction. So you're constantly seeing mutations. And obviously we would not like to see mutations that, that compromise vaccination. Although uh, the way that these vaccines are designed, it's, it makes it pretty unlikely for that to happen. I think right now we really should be focusing on this implementation challenge. Um, obviously there have been some planning opportunities missed so far in the United States and, and probably elsewhere, but it's just, it's like an all hands on deck moment for public health. Do people want to get vaccinated or are you still hearing about many, you know, percent, a big percentage of the population pushing back against it? Um, I would say that there are people fall into three groups. You have people who really want to get vaccinated. They're the ones you see the pictures of, like sleeping out outside the pharmacies, thinking that maybe they can get vaccinated in the morning um, and, and others. Then you have people who really don't want to get vaccinated. They have different fears that I think may be based on misinformation, but they're a relatively small group of people. And then you have a bunch of people, you know, could be even 40 percent who intend to get vaccinated but want to see how it goes first, maybe waiting a little bit, have some questions and want to get those answered. It's really important to engage with them, to um, get them good information in ways that they can receive information. That's part of that local effort, too. I don't think that all can be done federally. Um, Dr. Sharstein, when do we reach herd immunity on the vaccines? So because we're, uh, it's unclear how long these vaccines actually last for, does you know, 80% of the population need to be vaccinated fairly quickly to make sure that we have five, six months of reprieve? So nobody knows that exact number. You know, it'll be um, empirical to a certain extent, meaning as the vaccination goes up, we'll watch what happens to the number of infections. We know that we can get there quicker if people follow the basic precautions of wearing a mask, washing their hands, keeping their distance, those things absolutely still matter. The number to keep an eye on is community transmission. I mean, we're just seeing, a, a, unfortunately, 
terribly high numbers of patients in the hospital in the intensive care unit. We have to bring those down, and we can do that partly with the vaccine, but partly with all the things that we need you know, to be doing to reduce the chance of the virus to jump from person to person. The faster we can do that, the quicker all the other aspects of this will come together and we'll be in a better position to, uh, you know, just continue to vaccinate and build up to, to herd immunity.